Welcome to the second IJ interview, Infrastructure Journal's video podcast series with innovators and leaders in the world of funding and financing global infrastructure. Today I am joined by Anne Christine Champion, the Global Head of Infrastructure and Projects in the Structured and Asset Finance Division at the French Bank Natixis. Project finance banking has experienced a lot of challenges since 2008 and each bank has reacted differently. Through it all, Natixis has remained a steady performer in IJ's league tables while evolving and innovating the role of the Project Finance Bank in the current market. And Christine, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, John. Um, first question. I think there's an obvious discussion to have uh, with you about the role of institutional investors, uh, but I wanted to ask about traditional bank lending. There's an increased chatter in the market that bank liquidity is returning and that project finance banks are both more active and more competitive uh, than they have been in recent years. Um, do you share that view? Compared to the same period of time last year, the first uh, half year of this year saw an increase um, in the infrastructure debt financing of 36%. So one could say that the bank liquidity is back. But in fact, looking at it um, in a closer manner, um, although there's been a slight increase in the loan market, the bulk of the growth is coming from first bond issuance and closing of mega deals, which are funded by multilaterals or non-commercial bank. Like, for instance, the 7.7 .7 US dollar billion US dollar um, Kazakhstan to China pipeline, mm. which has been funded by China Development Bank, mm. or the 1.5 billion euro um, Brebemi toll road motorway, with a significant portion coming from Casa de Depositi, a prestity. Um, if you look, look, in fact, in the number of transactions, um, there has been a decrease uh, for the third year in a row in terms of numbers of transactions that have closed. 200 this year compared to 230 last year, and it's even it's worse for European PPP transaction, uh, which uh, I've seen only 24 transactions reaching financial close mm -hmm. compared to 41 last year. It's also interesting to look at regional trends. In the US, the term loan B market raised ahead as sponsors uh, sought uh, to um, take advantage of attractive uh, credit conditions. Mm -hmm. The US 140A market, the US private placement markets uh, have also been extremely, extremely um, active uh, for all kinds of investment grade credits, including uh, infrastructure related uh, transactions. In Asia, uh, the market has been very uh, liquid, uh, abundant liquidity uh, in the market, which has been demonstrated by tight pricing range and large volume, um, so with a bank uh, market. In uh, Europe, sure, the liquidity is there and has always been there for short tenor transactions uh, like brownfield refinancing transaction, which offers three to five years uh, tenors. Uh, but if we look at longer tenor um, transactions, the regulatory constraint that banks are facing prevent them of lending in the same volume as they did in the past. What is your view on the uh, level of pricing and uh, the availability of tenor currently in the market? Pricing is uh, directly impacted by the liquidity which is available in the market. Um, in the very liquid Asian market, for example, there is a fierce competition which is leading to tight uh, price range. Um, in Europe, um, for this, it's interesting to look at this brownfield refinancing acquisition that have taken place since the beginning of the year. Um, there's been a very, uh, you know, a lot of appetite in the market, a lot of interest for these uh, infrastructure assets like port, airports, or regulated utilities. Also, competitive um, streaks uh, seen in the market stem from this um, need to be in the deal uh, mindset for very visible transactions. Um, so that has been leading to a decrease in margins, which dropped to uh, the 100 basis point area for the uh, three to five years tenor. Um, we've seen also uh, competition uh, starting to, uh, to, to, to be there for long tenor transactions, which are for some of them starting below 200 basis points, uh, topping out well before the 300 basis point area. And in America, the pricing have also been decreasing since the beginning of the year from 300 basis point area to the 200 basis point area. Uh, so, in terms of pricing, that's a global trend that uh, we, can, uh, we can see. Um, regarding your question on tenor, I think it um, requires some further analysis. Um, obviously, the sponsors have taken the advantage on the short end spectrum of the, of the curve uh, with lower margins. But for long-term tenors, what we see is that it requires um, 
new funding strategies, which are key focus for sponsors. Uh, these new funding strategies will require new players um, with capital market solutions, institutional liquidity, um, and when these strategies are properly handled, they can prove to be very successful. Um, for example, the Castor transaction in Spain is in that respect very interesting. So this is the first EU project finance uh, transaction. And one could have seen this uh, 21.5 years financing for 1.4 billion euros, could have seen that as a challenge. Uh, but structuring and placement strategy uh, properly handled make it a success. Um, and uh, out of the 29 high quality investors that made up the book of the Castor transaction, 61% are pension funds and insurance companies, 10% asset managers, 4% banks, the rest coming from agencies. Mm. So we can, we can see that these figures um, demonstrate that the, the financing landscape for this large infrastructure project is under undergoing a fundamental transformation. Is Natixis putting more of its own balance sheet uh, into the market? Natixis um, has always been committed to infrastructure. This is a strategic activity for the bank. Uh, we've dedicated a significant portion of our balance sheet and we are very uh, active uh, in, in that uh, market. Uh, however, to further uh, develop our lending capacity and our um, uh, presence, we've developed a new model um, that uh, uh, allow us with our partners, AGS and CNP Assurance, to have a commitment capacity of up to 400 million euros per transaction. And this can be extended further uh, when we are willing to do so. The Texas has been proactive in engaging and educating uh, institutional investors about infrastructure investment. The bank has entered into separate co-investment agreements with AGS and CMP Assurance. Why is co-investment attractive to institutional investors? And uh, can you perhaps update us on the progress of those two partnerships? I think the partnership approach um, has proven to be attractive for various reasons. The first one is that there is a close relationship between the bank and the investors, which allow us to structure specific tranches that will fit with investors' appetite. And this is what we did, for example, on the Euroports transaction that closed last July with a specific tranche for investors. Second, uh, it's a light investment for the investors, uh, but with a certification of the deal by a bank through the alignment of interest. Finally, for sponsors, it's proved to be efficient because Natixis is fronting all the negotiation, discussions, and underwriting. In terms of where we are uh, with uh, this uh, partnership, we've signed uh, the partnership with AGS uh, last year in August. Uh, the vehicle has been put in place in December. We've transferred four assets as of today for a total amount of around 200 million euros, and we have still a lot of transaction in the pipeline. With CNP Assurance, we've um, uh, signed a memorandum of, of uh, understanding in June. Uh, the vehicle is soon to be uh, in place. Uh, we've already received the first commitment and there are also several transactions in the pipeline. What is the long-term view of uh, Natixis for global project finance and um, infrastructure investment? The regulatory um, environment has had a significant impact on the conditions under which banks can lend to long-term projects. Um, this uh, will lead, as for other asset classes, to less intermediation. However, banks still have a key role to play. Over the past 30 years, they've built up expertise and knowledge to lend to this project, to originate, structure, and monitor as well the, uh, the credit, the latter being very important for infrastructure debt financing. Um, this trend will be applicable worldwide, the ultimate impact being um, uh, dependent on uh, the regional liquidity, the regulatory regime, and the key feature of a specific market. But looking at Canada, for example, it's a major project bond market today with even indices which have been defined and that investors can use to, to uh, invest in the asset class. The latter market uh, uh, shows up very well for, with the first uh, half of the year with 4.5 billion uh, US dollar uh, bond issuance. In Europe, we've closed uh, the PPP prison transaction in January with the uh, institutional tranche. Um, some, of the closing, uh, some of the closing have taken place since then, and some will be in the next few months. So the market is evolving rapidly, and Natixis is supporting that trend uh, with a worldwide presence. 
this um, trend uh, is, in our view, uh, a structural change. The involvement of long-term investors uh, in the financing of infrastructure projects um, for two reasons. First one is that um, the regulators are limiting the transformation risk for banks, um, which has a direct impact on their ability to lend long-term to projects, meaning that there won't be a return to the previous world of financing. And the, the benefits of, uh, that come with matching long-term liabilities and long-term assets is and will be further incentivized for long-term investors. The fact that we see that uh, changes being as uh, structural um, is the reason why we've developed an infrastructure platform uh, that will be that will, in a flexible manner and um, on the long term, follow this evolution, with the objective to bring innovation and value to both ends of the market, issuers, sponsors, and investors. Uh, great, Anne. Thanks uh, for your time uh, in coming in today, and uh, and I hope you guys have a, a very busy uh, end to the year, as I'm sure it, it will be. And I look forward to hearing more about uh, what Netixis achieves uh, this year. Thank you, John, for having me on. Excellent, and um, thank you for watching, and uh, look forward to the next video podcast with one of the leaders in this market.